Welcome to a tour of it on Unity 2023. So let's pick up where we left off last time. We learned we can now work with the physics system by adding extra components to a game object. And as a review, when we work with Unity, we create game objects and we get information from different systems by subscribing to them or what we call components. So we saw in a previous video that we can add collider components to particular game objects that then give us physics information. This physics information doesn't do anything unless at least one game object doing the colliding or doing other physics things also has a body. We use the term rigid body within Unity to define this. So we have a rigid body right here component on the square as also a box collider. We previously saw how we can edit the collider to make it either the shape, so box collider with a box size, or a circle collider with a circle size, or extend it out. So if I select circle, we see that actually its circle collider extends outside of the circle. And this is what we might call a hitbox or a hurt box in game design or game development terms. The thing that is detecting whether or not a hit or a hurt happens is extending out from the shape itself. It could be the shape, but it could also extend out from the shape. So let's talk in this video a little bit about how collection mechanics work. So we know that we can detect when one thing overlaps with another. This is caused by at least one of those things doing the overlapping, what we call a collision, having a body or what's called a rigid body within Unity. So something has that, fit, that mass information, that physics information, and it passes through or overlaps with, at some point, another game object that has a collider component. When that happens, we can detect it and do something. And we call that entering collision, that initial part of that collision. So we saw that we can write a method within C Sharp called on collision enter 2D for the 2D part of the collision and then do something. So let's review the code that, ha that we had last time. So on collision enter 2D, when the collision starts at the very beginning, and then we said we can detect when the collision happens and we can get the thing we are colliding with or what's called the incoming collider. So the incoming collider 2D involved in the collision with the other collider. And we're going to say the word collider quite a bit in this video. So just as a quick review, let's look at what that means. So if I move this red square over into the circle, we get over in the console, right? collision and what I'm colliding with, the other collider, circle collider. The circle has a circle collider and the square or box has a box collider. So say I want to affect another game object. Well, the collider is a component on the game object, which means we can access the game object itself. So let's do something a little bit different. Let's say when the red square touches the yellow circle, the yellow circle should disappear, or as we might put it in a more abstract way, be collected. We do that by removing the yellow circle from the scene. Remember, a scene is a collection of game objects. So to do that, we're going to need to know what the game object is when we collide with it. So Let's change this code a little bit. I'm going to keep in what I have right here, and we're going to add one more line. To do this, we're going to, to destroy the incoming game object, the thing we are colliding with. So I'm going to write game object, and then I want to use destroy. And then it's suggested that I'm interested in collision.gameObject, and I press tab, and I will take that suggestion. And if I put the cursor over here, the tooltip tells me this is the incoming game object involved in the collision, which is correct. That's what I want. So notice we got collision collider, the thing we collided with, which is the component, not the game object. And this is the game object attached to that collider. So it has that information. So if we go ahead and save this, then now when we intersect with, or what we might call overlap or collide, we will then remove the incoming collision. Or in other words, when we bump into the circle, the circle is going to get destroyed. So let's go ahead and run this code. And now as I run into the circle, boop, it disappeared. And not only did it disappear from right here, the game view, it also disappeared from the hierarchy view itself. Because remember, the hierarchy view is the current actors in the scene. So it disappeared right here. 
Well, that's pretty useful. Potentially we could collect one thing. What if we want to collect a bunch of things that are very similar? So let me posit to you a kind of hypothetical. Let's pretend you're creating some type of platformer game. You're collecting coins or some type of top-down game. You're collecting keys or collecting hearts or collecting health or any other things like that. You might have a bunch of different things that are relatively the same. That is, they have the same general code. To do that, we can duplicate an existing game object in the scene. So if I select circle over here and I right click right here, or I select it and we can go up to edit and do the same thing. Remember, there are often multiple ways to do things within Unity. So either right clicking or going to edit and go down to duplicate. And now we've got circle and circle one. So I'm gonna make sure circle one is selected and I'm gonna click and drag it away. And notice that circle one's over here and circles over here. But something important just happened. When I duplicated it, it duplicated not only the game object, but all of its components and also any of the associated scripting components. So circle has a scripting component, or scripting, it doesn't have a scripting component, that is, and circle one doesn't have, doesn't have a scripting component, but has the circle collider. If I were to duplicate square, it would have the corresponding scripting component. What's important though, as I got a little bit confused how I was explaining it, uh, of the circle colliders is now it has both circle colliders and has the extended edit colliders we did in a previous video. So now if I run this, we can potentially destroy, that is collect those two things, destroyed and destroyed. So potentially if I wanted to create keys or health or other things, I could create it one time to find everything I need in relation to whatever is collecting it, the player, or character, or whatever, mouse, or however we're doing it. And then when I've then created it, I can just duplicate it within the same scene, creating copies of that same game object and corresponding components at the same time. So I have circle and circle, and because the code is over in the square, it is whatever it intersects with will then be destroyed. So this allows us to, if we want, create that kind of collection mechanic, or at least start towards that direction. Now, the complication comes into play is what if there are some things we want to collect that do one thing, and some things that when we collect do another thing. So let me give you another example. Let's say we collect health that increases some type of health points or health number or something. And let's say there's other things that we might collide with, lava or spikes or something that might hurt us. This creates a situation where now we want to differentiate between one set of things and another set of things when we collide with them. And this is what we'll visit in a future video. How do we create multiple game objects that have similar components, that is getting information from multiple systems, and then encode make sure one thing does one thing and one thing does another thing. So we are potentially collecting circles, but we're not collecting something else. When we collide with spikes or a wall or just other shapes in this example, we want it to do one thing. When we collide with circles, we want it to do a different thing. And that will get us into the next video as we think about ways to differentiate game objects from each other when these events happen. But at least for this video, we can see how collection mechanics work. They work by destroying or otherwise removing a game object from the scene. And we can do that using gameobject.destroy and then when working in collision, collision.gameobject. The last thing I want to mention here before I end this video is notice the game object is a little lighter color. It's perhaps maybe hard to see in some resolutions, but it's a slightly lighter color. If I put the cursor over, it's going to tell me something that there's a potential fix. And the potential fix is the name can be simplified. So game object is a collection of methods and other information that affect all game objects. Notice that when we're talking about the game object we are attached to, we use a little g. When we're talking about all game objects or potentially things that affect all game objects, we're talking about a capital G. So capital G game object for everything, little g game object for the thing I am attached to as a scripting component. So the fix here it's telling me is I don't have to write that. I can just assume destroy right here, and that's what it's going to prefer. So you might see if you look at example code from other sources, it simply says destroy, but what it's actually talking about is game object, capital G dot destroy, but the kind of preferred or slightly more efficient version is to just write destroy, but that's what it's referring to. 
so we can destroy that corresponding incoming game object. And again, we'll visit in a future video what it looks like to differ differentiate between one thing and another thing as we collide with them. Or, as we'll start to think in a future video, what if we shift that collision code to the other things themselves? That is, what if we have a bunch of different scripting components that all interact in different ways, and we'll look at how we can approach things within Unity, thinking about the collision taking place in one or taking place in the other potential source of the collision. So either the incoming or outgoing, but we'll get to that in a future video. At least for this video, we can start to see how collection mechanics work, working with the knowledge we already have of how collisions work, working with the physics system, adding a body to at least one thing that we're moving around, generally the player avatar or whatever we're moving as a player, having that body, having these collider components on game objects so they register physics things, and working with on collision enter 2D to put all of this concept together within Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.